Welcome to Unit 1. In this unit, we're going to cover the basics of HTML and CSS. We'll use that knowledge to build a personal website together. We'll learn the basic theory around web page design and development, including how to design for both mobile screens and desktop screens. And all of this will give us a solid foundation for learning JavaScript in the next unit. The technologies that we're going to learn in this unit include more than just HTML and CSS. Replit is where we'll be doing most of our coding in this first unit. We'll learn how to set it up and use it together. It's an IDE, which is short for Integrated Development Environment, and we'll discuss what that means just a few lessons from now. We'll also learn about DNS, the domain name system, and how it is used with our personal websites to give them a unique web address. For example, www.mysite.com. We'll also learn about web developer tools that are built into every web browser and how to use them. Finally, we'll learn about third-party scripts and how we can add them to our site for extra functionality. These third-party scripts are small pieces of code written in JavaScript by other people and companies. Even though we won't have learned any JavaScript in this unit, we can still use these third-party scripts on our site and they're straightforward to set up. They'll allow us to do cool things like collect emails from our site visitors, allow them to send us simple messages, or even collect payments for our services. Some of you may already have other skills or careers that can be done remotely, so knowing how to start collecting payments or customer information can be a big help in the beginning of your web developer journey. Throughout the unit and the course, we'll also take breaks from practicing to use technologies so that we can discuss the theory behind it. In this unit, we'll discuss the theory behind markup languages, style sheet languages, and programming languages. All three are used for coding and building websites, but each one has a specific purpose and we need to learn to choose the right tool for the job. We'll also learn responsive design theory and why we usually build our websites with a mobile first approach. We'll briefly discuss UX UI design and wireframing. It's usually a separate career path that works alongside web developers, especially when a team is building a big website together, but we're learning it because I've found that a little knowledge of UX UI design makes students much better web developers. We don't want our websites to look like hot garbage. It will also help you understand and work better with your future UX UI designer coworkers. Once we've designed and coded our personal website, we need to get it on the internet somehow. Understanding the theory behind hosting, web servers, and deployment will help us do that. Finally, at some point, we'll also talk about the theory behind web browsers, how they work, and what they're actually doing when we visit a website. That's about it for our intro. I need you to bookmark both of the sites on this slide. We'll use the first one, MDN, short for Mozilla Developer Network, all the time, and Miro will use less frequently. Again, MDN is short for Mozilla Developer Network, and it contains references and guides for everything that we need to know about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you ever forget something about HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, you can find a good explanation of it on MDN and also many examples of its usage. Later on, we'll also use Miro for sketching out some basic web page designs. Miro lets us draw all sorts of shapes in the web browser. There's no code involved whatsoever. It's only for drawings and designs. We'll pretty much only be drawing a bunch of circles and rectangles, so don't worry. You can be a very bad artist like me and still be a web developer. All right, now that we have both of these bookmarked, let's get into our first lesson.